Okay guys, welcome back to the workshop and part 7 of the RC Fugly build. Um, tonight I'm going to concentrate on how we uh, fit the surfaces using the uh, Sinotype wick hinges. Uh, I'll show you how we put those in position and what we use. Uh, before I go into that though, I'd like to show you where we're up to on the build so far. So if I turn the camera around and sort of stand back a little bit, you can now see the completed wing. It's been fully covered, uh, both the aerolons and the, and the actual main body of the wing itself, uh, using that uh, cheap Hobby King transparent plastic. It's, uh, it's pretty good stuff actually, you know, for the price of it, uh, considering it's sort of half price um to the well-known brands it's uh it's turned out quite good i'm quite pleased with it um so that, that's the covering and what i think i'll do is put some sort of a, a design over the wing uh, of some description at a later date just to jazz it up a little bit and uh, so i can see which uh, sort of orientation the wing is in uh just taking a quick look at the fuselage there you can see the tail feathers have now been put on uh fully hinged and glued into position and it's also uh, fully covered. So if we move on to the hinges, uh, I've got one here that I'd like to show you. It's like a fibrous type material. Um, and a, just a little tip for you when fitting these hinges, and uh, a good one that I picked up off a fellow uh, modeler a few years ago, and that is to actually stick a pin, just a normal modeling pin, through on the center line of the hinge. And the idea of this is, when you come to place the hinge into uh, the slots that you've uh, pre-made, you know, in the wing and, yeah, well, if I can just place that there to show you. Um, I've got the pin on the center line and what that actually does is when, when you bring the two halves together, the aerial onto the wing, it stops the hinge from being pushed back in the slot that you've created and uh, you don't lose it inside the wing, obviously. And, and the same... Um, for the aerolon so you know when you close the gap it's going to be uh 50 50 in each side of the wing and the aerolon there so just a a little tip there as you can see i've done that all the way along you can see the pins in position from when i glued them uh, earlier on tonight i also use the same method for the elevator there and also the rudder so it's a, a good little tip that is and uh, I've used it many times um, the type of glue that we're going to use is uh, the very very thin CA type uh, glue this is what I'm using at the moment it's uh, the first time I've ever used this particular brand uh, but it seems as good as uh, any other to be honest so um, you know time will tell um, also an, another good tip is to fit a proper dispenser onto the end of your uh, bottle there so you can see it's got a very very fine tip uh, which helps you uh, get the glue in exactly the right place and rather than just using the bottle itself it does tend to go everywhere like I say it's very very thin stuff you have to be very careful that you don't uh, stick your fingers at the same time and also you, you obviously don't want to get any glue onto that covering that you've just put on so once I've got the, the hinges in position, I've slid the two parts together. Uh, I've got my pins in position so nothing moves. Uh, all I do then is deflect the surface down as far as it'll go and then just stick a few drops of glue on the actual hinge there and let it wick in and uh, do its job. Um, after a few seconds of applying the glue, just give the aerolons or the rudder, whatever you're doing, a bit of a waggle just to free the hinge of uh, any sino. Uh, just be aware that because it's so thin, it might run through to the other side. So it's worth flipping the model over, <coughs> excuse me, and um, and checking the other side for runs. Um, so basically, that's it. Nothing, nothing really to it. Um, moving on to the hardware that we're going to use, as you can see, those are four servos that I've stripped out of a foamy Watt 4. Th those are the servos that the model has been designed around and also uh, the motor and the ESC. Uh, all I'm going to do now is to obviously fit those servos or two of those servos into the servo carrier and uh, 
just screw that down only two screws either side that's for the aerolons um, obviously you have got a servo that fits in the tail end of the aircraft I've got to cut that little square covering away drop a servo in uh, there'll be a short um, linkage going to the rudder and then also this little square in the side of the fuselage that coverings cut away servo popped in there with two screws either side uh, with a, a little um, control horn on the the elevator there and a short rod just joining the two so that's quite a simple simple task uh, you can see these are the supplied uh, horns and uh, control rods etc that are supplied in the kit to be honest it's in quite good quality or very good quality actually for this size of electric model and uh, with them being so big it should give quite a, a good throw on the control surfaces so moving on to the motor uh, this is a motor that I've had in my uh, my box for quite a while um, and this is the one I'm going to be using if I can focus in on that it's a overlander thumper um, to be honest I don't really know a great deal about electric motors but this one is capable of 408 watts so uh, should be plenty powerful enough for this model I think the the actual um, instructions recommend 400 watts so we're bang on the money with that it's only a fairly cheap motor I think it was about 23 quid plus the prop uh, a couple of quid for the prop and then I'll be fitting a 40 amp uh, Synergy ESC uh, control unit there to be honest this is one of the cheaper ones on, out on the market at about 16 17 quid uh, against the usually about 30 pounds sort of mark for a 40 amp so uh, again this is the first time with me um, so this is the the model that we'll be testing it out on obviously but uh, reports are good on the internet forums and that. They all uh, reckon they're pretty good. So uh, hey-ho, we'll give it a go. So that's about it for this, this video. Um, next video, like I say, we'll be fitting the gear. But the real bit that I want to show you is how to balance the model and uh, attain the correct C of G um, by using, hopefully, the radio equipment, the battery and everything as ballast uh, to sort of achieve that so uh, hopefully we'll be able to do it without additional lead but uh, again we'll see that when we'll put it on the balancer so okay thanks very much for watching if you've enjoyed the video so far uh, please feel free to subscribe and uh, comment if you have any comments and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video